to the Entertain Talking Sports. What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. And in this video, I'm going to jump into a couple of topics about the New York Giants. Uh, one of them, one of which was um, suggested by one of my uh, subscribers in my last video, so I want to shout Cruz on out. Uh, he brought up the topic of PFF rating Saquon Barkley as being the biggest mistake in terms of a personnel decision by the New York Giants over the last five years. I'll jump into that. I'll give my opinion on what they had to say. Also, I wanted to touch on uh, the new coaching shakeup by the New York Giants, being that the New York Giants gave Freddie Kitchens more added responsibilities from within the New York Giants offense. I'll get into exactly what the title is going to be and what he may be able to add to the New York Giants offense with the expanded role. Um, of course, last year, he was the offensive coordinator when Jason Garrett went out with COVID, I think for a week, maybe it was two weeks, uh, in which he was calling plays, obviously still from within Jason Garrett's offense, something that Kitchens did back in 2018, if you remember correctly, when the Browns moved on from Hugh Jackson and the offensive coordinator, I can't remember who it was, he stepped in, still running the same scheme, calling the plays, and had a dramatic uh, improvement in the offensive production, which is why he ultimately became the head coach for the Browns in 2019. But I'll jump into all of that and just how big uh, of an improvement that offense had in Cleveland when he was calling the plays over the second half of that season. But first, we're going to start uh, with the topic brought up by Cruzon, talking about Saquon Barkley. And everybody knows, if you watch my channel, I love Saquon Barkley. Uh, he's my favorite player in the New York Giants. But I will readily admit uh, that Saquon Barkley was a mistake by the New York Giants at number two overall. The proper play there would have been to trade down. I say it all the time, and it has very little to do with Saquon Barkley, and it, and it doesn't even have as much to do with the fact that you don't take a running back second overall, because I'm going to dispel that myth right now. Because at number two overall, the New York Giants had the option of taking Sam Darnold, Josh Rosen, um, nobody was taking Lamar Jackson, so throw that out the water. You may be playing Monday morning quarterback and say they should have taken Lamar Jackson, no one was taking Lamar Jackson. Every team in the league, including the Baltimore Ravens, passed up on him before they traded back up into the first round and, t and take it, then took him. So it was either Rosen, it was either Darnold, it was Barkley, it was Nelson, or it was Chubb. Those were the options for the New York Giants. Maybe you could argue Josh Allen, but I could just as easily argue if Josh Allen came to the Giants with the lack of support that the Giants have provided Daniel Jones, Allen probably wouldn't be the same quarterback that you saw this year. But yeah, you could certainly argue Josh Allen. But the two quarterbacks that everybody was talking about that the Giants may take were Rosen and Darnold at that selection. Well, both of those quarterbacks look to be not starting quarterbacks anymore in the NFL. So you can make an argument that we made the right decision not taking a quarterback there, which was the biggest uh, one by most Giant fans that didn't want to take a running back. The other thing I hear all the time is you don't take a running back number two overall. And for the people that say they made a mistake but shouldn't have taken a quarterback, they say we should have taken Quentin Nelson, to which I'll say... Quentin Nelson absolutely would have been the better pick by the New York Giants. But the reasoning for positional value, I completely disagree with. The reason that Nelson would have been the better pick is because we should have been rebuilding, which was our biggest mistake. There's no doubt about it. The New York Giants should have began the rebuild in 2018. I say it all the time. An offensive guard would have been a long-term pick. What they tried to do was try to revitalize Eli Manning's career and bring in a guy that could spark the offense. They figured with him and Odell Beckham, maybe they would have something magical, and it didn't work out. And it was a mistake. That doesn't mean that we can't ultimately become a very good football team with Saquon Barkley, who's currently on the roster. I still firmly believe that Saquon Barkley is one of the two or three best running backs when healthy in the sport. And if this offensive line improves, he's going to look a lot better. The other thing I'll say is if Will Hernandez worked out, which as of now doesn't look like it's going to, nobody would be talking about Quentin Nelson. Will Hernandez looked to be very good value where the New York Giants selected him in the second round. Most people had a first round grade. Didn't work out. Okay, didn't work out. Well, Hernandez does not. Uh, but in terms of the positional value, for people that say we should have taken Quentin Nelson too, that's all well and good. It made more sense. But if you're going to argue positional value between the running back and the guard, well, all I'll show you is this. This is since 1936, since the NFL draft started, I believe. There's only been 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 guards selected in the top five picks since 1936, so I could definitely argue that the value is actually stronger at the running back position than it is at the guard, albeit that the offensive line was the smarter pick. Both were thought to be transformational talents. That's why Nelson went as early as he did. Number six overall is very high for a guard, but if you go all the way back to when I was born, 1985, since then, there's only been two guards selected in the top five. One was Leonard Davis, the other, of course, Jonathan Ogden, who is one of the best guards in the history of the NFL. 
So you could definitely, you know, say that in terms of taking a running back, you could say the same thing about taking a guard. What the New York Giants should have absolutely done there was trade down. That was the ideal move there if you weren't taking a quarterback. They should have traded down. There were probably trade offers there, and we can't live in the past. But it was a mistake. But was it the biggest personnel decision mistake by the New York Giants in the last five years? I, I don't think so. I mean, look at some of the decisions that the New York Giants have made. Drafting Evan Ingram when we couldn't block. You drafted a tight end who couldn't block uh, over guys like TJ Watt, Ryan Ramsick. So that was a horrible decision. Uh, drafting Eli Apple 10th overall. He was off the team like two or three years later. He sucks. That was a horrible decision. Worse to take on Barkley. Of course, Barkley's been, been injured. But Barkley has at least proven to be a big-time playmaker when he's healthy and on the field. Eli Apple, who was 10th overall, was just a bad player. Never even contributed at all to the New York Giants. Um, you could even argue Nate Solder. Signing Nate Solder to the contract that we did ended up being a horrible decision. Trading up for DeAndre Baker. We got one year out of the guy. We gave up draft capital. Wasted a first-round pick on him. You could argue that that could be a worse decision. Even making trades for, like, Ogletree. Uh, if you want to include coaches, hiring Pat Shermer. <laughs> so there are definitely worse decisions, at least in my opinion, than the New York Giants selecting Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley is still a guy that is a big-time difference maker when he's on the field. And I go back to the impact that he has on Daniel Jones when he's on the field and when he's off of it. Now, what could combat, compound this mistake, and what I think Giants fans fear, is if Saquon Barkley does not make a big big impact in the win column for the New York Giants this year if the New York Giants go out there and extend him and tie up salary. And we're going to have to wait and see. And we'll see if Saquon Barkley earns that contract. But for Barkley to earn the contract, in my opinion, he has to play 16 games and he has to be proven worthy of being a guy that uplifts the offense. A guy that, and, and I'm not just talking about in statistics, I'm talking about in terms of wins, makes this a true playoff football team. A 10-11 win football team. A guy that elevates the offense. And we're going to have to wait and see how that all plays out this year, and that's a discussion for another day. But that's my overall thoughts on it. Do I think it was a mistake? Yeah. Has nothing to do with Saquon Barkley. Has everything to do with the fact of where the New York Giants were at that point in time. Had the New York Giants had a very good offensive line at the time, I could have easily argued that, yeah, Saquon Barkley may have been the right pick. The fact of the matter is we had no offensive line. We had a 37-year-old quarterback on the back end of his career. So, the pick never made sense. Not the player. I completely understand the player. Next up, we're going to talk about the news about the coaching uh, musical chairs with the New York Giants. Some changes to the New York Giants offensive staff include Freddie Kitchens getting bumped to senior offensive assistant per sources. Kitchens was the tight ends coach. Derek Dooley, who attracted interest from other teams recently, handles tight ends. So I think he's assuming here where Dooley, I think this was his job last year, will become the tight ends coach if he remains on with the New York Giants. That coming from Jordan Renan. Um, and obviously, in my opinion, this could very well be molding uh, him to become the future offensive coordinator for the New York Giants. And we're going to have to wait and see how that all plays out. But what can he add to this New York Giants offense in this role? Will this help uh, potentially open up the New York Giants offense? Well, these are some things that I wanted to point out what Freddie Kitchens did when he got more personnel, say, with the Cleveland Browns and that offense. Since firing Jackson and Haley, only the Saints, Steelers, Chiefs, Chargers, and Patriots have averaged more offensive yards per drive than the Browns at 38.3. That going all the way back to 2018, about four or five weeks into him pulling plays. In addition to that, I wanted to pull this up. This is from Field Yates. From weeks 1 to 8, the Browns ranked 28th in yards per play at 4.87. From weeks 9 to 15, the Browns ranked 2nd in yards per play at 6.61. No team has experienced a greater rise than the Browns, plus 35.7% in that time. Of course, that is when Freddie Kitchens, uh, Kitchens took over the play calling duty, duties, and one thing that he really brought to that team was more down-the-field plays, opening up the offense. Um, and of course, you know, you need the players on your team as well. There's no denying that, but I do think adding Freddie Kitchens to this offense at least signifies to me that, well, I still think the New York Giants will have a run-heavy approach, especially when you look at the offensive line coach we brought in I do think the New York Giants, they will bring in weapons, and they will make a conservative effort to really try to open up this offense in 2021, something that we definitely need. Having Barkley back will definitely help that, being that I believe they will try to stack the box, but we will need stronger weapons on the outside. I think it's something the New York Giants will look to do, and bringing in Freddie Kitchens, I think, should only amplify that for the New York Giants, but we're going to have to wait and see how it all plays out. As always, if you like what you watch, please subscribe. Drop a comment. Maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.